Wanna know some of the most ridiculous things known to all the six billion people of this planet? Well, here it is. Facebook. It's ridiculous. Clement Sergers is waiting to see your post on your timeline. I mean, waiting to see... Well, you can read it for yourself. What the heck? I am Clement Sergers. I don't even use Facebook anymore. I don't even know what the timeline thing is. Well, good news, everybody. Tapes have arrived. So I can now use the Handycam, which is what I'm using right now. And it's still recording, isn't it? So here I am, the ugliest thing in the world who seriously needs a haircut, recording on the Sony Handycam. And got my own external microphone plugged up to it because if I put it right up to the tape mechanism you might be able to hear that if I unplug it so now we're just using the camera's microphone well don't want that uh, buzzing in the background from the tape transport using my external microphone I might be overdriving the camera a little bit I don't know I have to um, maybe reconfigure this and make it a bit quieter for use with the camera. Anyway, we'll just see how things go. So anyway, I've got a few projects lined up. One of them is that I am going to be upgrading this computer pretty soon. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. Possibly towards the end of this month. And that is going to be a huge video. In the world of the never-ending failure Tesla coil project, done a few more experiments with this. You can see that I've changed the coil to one of these flat pancake-style coils. That's given me better results. I can run this off a lower voltage and still get a thing. Which I'm going to do right now. Let me just... Uh, Connect up the meter, which I'm using as the switch to turn the thing on and off. Okay, it's drawing about 3 milliamps at the moment, so it should be drawing a bit more than that. Although, when that thing starts oscillating, that completely throws them. It interferes with the meter and completely throws the reading off, but let's just try to get something out of this. Okay, now, it's a bit more like it. Now I should get a little sparkler at the top of this. I'm not sure how you're going to see this because it's a bit too bright in this room. But, oh, it started. You can see with this light bulb, or with this um, CFL, that is lighting up wirelessly. You might be able to see the little sparkler at the top there. You might not. Hooray for the evils of autofocus! Well, you can sort of see it. Right there. And that's only operating on a fraction of the voltage. Now with that other primary, I wouldn't have been able to do that. With uh, this particular transformer. But everything in this circuit is Live! Everything in this has got high voltage on it. Now I could take this fluorescent light. See, it's all still lighting up a little bit, but if I touch the primary with this fluorescent light, see that lights up just touching it. This bit here, which goes to the gate of the transistor, there's high voltage there. And even on the transistor itself, And I learned that the hard way, that there's high voltage there, because I touched that and gave myself a nasty RF burn. Can still do the light bulb trick. Now, for some reason, at this particular voltage, I have to kind of jiggle the wire about on the primary here until this starts. There we go. Now, you can see the light bulb. If I zoom in on that, we've got some nice little purple streamers going on. And if I touch it, 
goes out because I'm changing the capacitance and all that. Anyway, the reason why I think this works better with this coil, this primary, its resonant frequency is nearer the resonant frequency of this thing. This is the same coil that I've been using all the time. The only difference is I've wrapped it in tape to keep it protected. Now I do know from the Slayer Exciter experiment that this is about 1.4 megahertz. And from another experiment I did, I found out that this is about 6 megahertz. So that's going to need a little bit of a rethink. But it still works better than the other coil. And I found that if I connect it about there, that's where it works best. So now, I'm going to show you how I found the resonant frequency of that coil. Is of course, connect the coil up to a frequency generator, put a whole range of frequencies into it and find out which one it responds best to, and there you go. Only trouble is, I don't have a frequency generator. So, I made one, and uh, this is it right here. See, we've got an LC tank circuit, and some various other bits and pieces. It's connected up to the scope right now, and as you can see, it's working. And, as I adjust the variable capacitor, you can see on the scope that the frequency goes up and down. It cuts off about there. But, it does work. can't remember what free, um, range of frequencies I get from this. But, let's go over to a schematic and, um, well, let's have a look at it. So, this is the circuit. It's not very complicated. And, this is my own design. I didn't get this from a book or a internet or anything like that. I designed the circuit myself, based on what I know. And this is what I came up with. This is where you connect the capacitor and coil. That will also work with a crystal. Um, don't need that capacitor when the crystal's connected. This is to set the working points of the circuit. And this is to set the um, for the gain. But I guess the make saying volume control is the easiest way for people to understand what that does. Okay, I now have it connected up to a crystal. And there you can see the waveform. This is a 3.58 or something. It's a 3.57 megahertz. Now I'm trying to do this without my tremendous bulk getting in the way. But I'm going to show you what happens when I adjust the thing. You can see the waveform as it changes. Now, if I set this gain to full, you're going to see some very strange waveforms. Okay, that's on as full as it can go, so that variable resistor might just as well be a wire at this point. And now, as I adjust the um, working point, That's the kind of waveforms you get. The crystal claims to be 3.57 megahertz. I don't know if you can make that out on the video. So we'll see how accurate that actually is. This is the waveform on the scope, and yes, I know I still have the gain up too much, but that's not going to matter in this case. It's about 1.4 squares long. And here is a little program that I wrote in BASIC which can do all the hard calculations for me so it will work out what that frequency is quicker than I can blink. So I'll just run it. Now I said it's about 1.4 divisions long so I'm going to put that in and I've got the scope set to 2 microseconds per division. And there we go. The frequency is 
3.57142 megahertz. Actually, I made a little error in the data entry there. Let me just do that again. Okay, 1.4. Point 0.2 microseconds. There, that looks more like it. It says the frequency is three, well, we'll just say 3.57 megahertz. And that's exactly what it says on the crystal. And there's the program again, just to prove I didn't make any changes to it. You might, if you want to try that program for yourself, you can. You might have to adjust it for your particular version of BASIC. But there you go. Anyway, video's kind of getting off track here. Started randomly waffling on about Tesla coils and stuff. Anyway, this is another project that is going to be done in the future. A powerful power supply using a couple of microwave oven transformers. There'll be more about that in the later video. Oh, and you know what I forgot? I forgot to say how, I'm how I tested the um, frequency of that coil. Unfortunately, the oscillator that I made doesn't have the right frequency range for testing the coil. So, to get more range of frequencies, I've reverse engineered this radio and uh, sort of turned that into a high frequency oscillator. Now, before anybody says anything, I have not ruined this old radio. I have not um, made it so it's unoperationable anymore. All I've done, just added this transistor here to the oscillator's output, which is right there. And that goes out to the coil under test. Right, so let's... Uh, Give this a go. Now I know this works because I tested it before I did the video. Let me just turn the radio on. Okay. So you can see, there's the thing on the scope which is connected across the coil. And as I adjust the tuning, can't really see what that's what I'm doing, but uh, maybe if I move the camera a bit. Well, you can sort of see my arm there, where the tuning dial is. I mean, where the tuning knob is. And as I adjust that, I can find the frequency that the coil responds best to. So it's still going up, it's still going up. Okay, it's starting to go down, so I'll back that off a bit. And right about there seems to be the best, best frequency for this particular coil. See that when I touch the coil? Makes all kinds of crazy crap happen. So now, I can find out what the frequency is. Now, at this point, it's a little bit hard to test. I mean, I could pull the thing out and have 10 times magnification. Actually, um, let's try that. That would make things a lot easier. Sometimes the waveform looks really weird if I have it on 10 times magnification, but this time it's actually okay. So, I'm going to count how many divisions long the wave is. I'm just going to center that a little better. Uh, put it on the bit where it slopes down. Okay. Just trying to center that really good. And I'm going to count from there. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's about 7 point, I'd say about 7.2. But remember, this is on 10 times magnification, so that's 0.72. And after plugging those numbers into the program, you can see it's 6.9 megahertz. I couldn't remember what the frequency was exactly, but there we go, that's what it is. And just to ensure nobody complains, I've disconnected all that stuff. Still works. See? Person or one race. Oh. Okay. Temperature 23 degrees Celsius. Those. Oh. Oh. 
the AM reception is yeah. 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 Let's try yeah. FM. Yeah. And in Worcester Street, there's always someone like. It's an audience of adults. Do they have possible eventuality in for the most part tonight? Yeah. Yuck! I thought she was drowning. <laughs> the well, central barrier. Too bad. And in North Yorkshire, the. Jeez, I think there's about three radio stations on right now. All Transmitting the same song. Love is love. Love is really? Is this what passes for music these days? It's terrible. A Rex trip and a Lego set. This is why I like vintage design better than modern design. And take a look at that. Yeah. Ancient 1970s compared to today's technology just doesn't look as nice. Ugh. Anyway, this is the circuit if you wish to know how I connected it all up. Had to use a PNP transistor because the radio that I was using is has positive ground, so using a PNP transistor is the obviously the best choice for that. But as you can see, just one transistor, one resistor, and that's pretty much it. And then of course the scope's connected across the coil. And I tune it up and down until I find what frequency passes through the coil the best. Anyway, stay tuned, there are some more videos coming up later on. Um, maybe not this week, but um, definitely later on this month. Including some waffly videos and some electronic videos. And maybe some less bad hair days.